Okay, let me just start introduction stuff. This, this is loud. I guess you can hear me okay. Um, welcome to week two. This is week two of our session. It was nice yesterday to have a holiday, but now we have to pay back for that by going extra long. I used to have this theory that whenever you have really good luck, you should worry because you have to have bad luck to make it balance even. You never have good luck without bad luck because you world is not good or bad, it's just average. So this weekend got to do a little bit of a trip. We went to uh, Ajanta and Alora and saw some things, caves. Some of the caves were, uh, well, there are many, many caves. They say it takes more than a week to see all the caves. So we didn't see all the caves, but we saw some caves and in a lot of countryside, which was interesting for us, I think, my wife and daughter and me, because um, it's different. So buffalo, cows, goats. One thing I was wondering, there's no sheep anywhere. You don't have sheep in this state? We do have. But we didn't see a sheep. But they move in herds. They move in herds. Yeah. Well, the goats move in herds, too. They seem to take up the whole road. I, I don't know why the goats need the roads, but... Uh. <laughs> no, no, they are also on the road sheets, but the, mostly they go to your hilly side. Ah. And sometimes they, 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 on the they road. graze, they graze on the hills. They graze, and they don't graze where they live, they have to go from home to graze and then come back home again? No, people are uh, nomads actually. Huh. People who are uh, with sheep are nomads. They move from place to place. Ah. So they are on the move all the time. They don't have a permanent place to stay. Okay. And the shepherds, they sleep out in the outside? Yeah. And they have a horse to look after the sheep and all that. Yeah. I, I once, when I retired first time, I thought I would become a shepherd <laughs> because I thought taking care of sheep and taking care of college students is about the same thing. <laughs> and uh, I went to Germany and they said I couldn't be a shepherd there because the sheep all speak German and I wasn't good enough in German to, to talk to the sheep. So I, I couldn't go. In the U.S., where I live, we don't have many sheep. Okay. We have uh, cows and a lot of people have horses, so, but not much sheep. Anyway, it was a nice weekend and enjoyed seeing things. Let me thought I'd start week two by just going over some things. One of the things coming up this Thursday is a little bit of a quiz. So we're going to do that and most of the quiz comes from week one because the week two is more difficult things to, to do in terms of a quiz. So most of it comes from week one and let me go over a few of the things that we, we talked about last week. It was all linear elastic fracture mechanics. So this week we start nonlinear. But in review of that, everything we did is based on the K factor, crack tip stress intensity factor. So you have to be able to get the K. And you have your tables and everything to get Ks. That's an important part. The three main behaviors that we talked about were fracture toughness, which is failure under monotonic loading, and then K1C was the, the variable to worry about. And then fatigue failure under cyclic loading, DADN delta K, and then environmentally assisted fracture, K1 EAC or K1 SCC in some of the older versions. Review the K formulas. There's two forms, the capital F. So given stresses, uh, mostly stresses, you have graphs to use, and they're mostly used for applications. That is solving the critical crack size and things like that. So that, that form, and then the little f form has the uh, given load rather than stress. You can use tables or polynomials Polynomials you can put in a computer, but for quick calculations, 
the table is more convenient. So using the table, you use this form and, and use that for the K. So the, the different behaviors, fracture toughness, we talked about the K1C test and all the details, very many details in there. So you have to be careful about plasticity and arc curve effects and they come through validity criteria at the end. And usually people do toughness versus temperature. So one test is usually not enough. So you do several tests. Um, fatigue had the initiation side, which is stress life SN, and that's more linear elastic or strain life, which is more plasticity. So if you have mostly linear elastic, you would do that. If you have a uh, high level of, of strain, you would do this. And they're, they're both more initiation than they are growth. And in the fracture mechanics approach, D80 and Delta K, the two main things for that, remember, was the region two, where you have log log plot with a straight line and do power law fits. That is useful when you go back and calculate uh, cyclic life. And in region one was a threshold, and that's a value then of delta K. If you stay below that, you should get no crack growth. And the important thing on that is that when you have an application with many, many cycles, that's about the only saving thing that you could use the threshold. Uh, you, you can't do cyclic life much more than about a million cycles. You just don't have the data to do that. Environmentally assisted cracking, uh, we found threshold below which there's no crack growth, K1EAC. And if you get above that, usually that crack growth rate is fairly fast. So you don't usually predict life above that because you might predict hours or days of life and not years. Um, so you would use K1EAC for design in that. And then at the end we did application. The